gotcha. What are you? Ha ha! It was an adventure, but we got him. Another afternoon on the water. A little bit windy in places. I'm nice and protected here where I am at the moment. When I get back out into the main channel, it's gonna be a bit blowy, but uh, hopefully I can hide myself away in a few spots. Chase a few flatfish, maybe as dusk falls, the mighty mother way. You never know, gotta get lucky every now and then. See how we go. sometimes enough to upset the balance on a small diving lure. It can be very annoying. Just sitting in some slightly deeper water here, casting into some shallower water. Just as I trolled past, I thought I'd cast into this little sandbank. See if something was sitting off the edge of it. As I drift past, trolling lure and gave it a crack. Hmm. Yep, here we go. First customer of the day. I'm going to go that it's a flathead by the feel of it, sitting up here in the shallows, and he's hit right beside the kayak. He hasn't had much of a chance to play up yet, so it's a bit hard to tell if he's a big one or a small one. There's a shadow in the water that seems to be decent size, so I'm just going to back off the drag a little bit and let him have a run if he wants to. There he goes. So there he was, just sitting up in the shallows, sunbathing, waiting for a bait fish to come past. And I flicked my hard body at him, or in the area where I thought that he might be. And it was just enough to tempt him into action. Still in winter here at the moment. So he was in the shallows looking for a bit of warm water. Except he's hit the lure within probably three or four meters of the kayak so he's very green and if I try to muscle him in he's probably gonna spit the chips and throw his toys out of the cot and that's when we have the chance of shaking him off or having him chew through the leader with his raspy teeth so I'm taking my time I've backed off the drag a little bit letting him use a little bit of his energy that he's stored up before I bring him to the deep. He's not a huge fish, but he's also decent, so you give them a little bit of respect, take your time, and the fish is yours. There he is, old mate Mr. Flathead see that diving minnow there just a small diving minnow that dives to about two and a half meters or so and I've just cast that into that shallow little sandbar back there twitched it along the ground and he's inhaled it hopefully you can see that he's got a fair set of choppers there and those raspy teeth can 
work their way through the leader if you're not careful. So I'll do my best to get him unhooked, show him to you and let him go. I'm going to get the pliers here, don't like to muck around when we've got trebles and also those lovely raspy teeth, they'll cut you up nice and good. And he is not a happy chap. Okay, that's one set of trebles down. That's the other set of trebles. And there he is. A lovely flathead. If you were going to take a feed home, he'd be a prime specimen. Look at that eye. A real little predator. Beautiful camouflage if you can see him against the the rock and the shale and the sand. He just blends in. Let's send him on his way. See you mate. Off he goes. on then. Felt a bit of weight, a little bit of head shakes. You know why? Because I was. And he played dog. Sometimes you just got to be careful. You got to be aware. These fish, even though they don't have big brains, they can be pretty smart. Not smart in the I can read Tolstoy method of smart but smart in the I'm gonna figure out how to bust rocket off on his kayak smart as in I've got rocket wrapped around his mirage drive smart So sometimes Rocket just needs to be patient and figure out what's going on with a fish that is smart and try and be smarter than the fish that is smart to catch the fish that is smart. Now, there's probably water all over the lens because this smart fish splashed me. So I'm going to just take a moment. No, it seems to be okay. So we're going to continue fighting this smart fish, get myself organized here, and uh, hopefully land our worthy adversary, which is a decent sized flathead that was sitting over in the shallows over here and I've cast my Z-Man three and a half shrimps at it. I don't have it wigged readlessly, rigged weedlessly, which is how they come out of the packet, but instead I've put it on a standard jig head. Now, I'm being washed up on shore because I almost got outsmarted by this fish with a brain the size of a Tic Tac. I know it doesn't say a lot about rocket, but you know. Trying to keep his head. There we go. Ha ha, it was an adventure, but we got him. Quite an adventure actually. Whew. Well, I'm just going to do another camera check and then we'll see to him. Okay, we've got our uh, angry lizard aboard here. For those of you who don't speak the vernacular, lizard be another word for flathead. And as you can see, hopefully, if I can just gentle my way under, 
that uh, Z-Man shrimps. He's in hail. Sorry, old girl. Yeah. And there we go. That's when they shake around. You take their head above water, they can easily chew through that leader. Now it's 15 pound leader, so that's not light. So that's one of the reasons why you keep their head below water and try not to put too much strain on that leader. Well, unfortunately, that hook was right down in the guts and in the gills. So um, I'm gonna find somebody who's gonna accept this lovely eating size flathead and uh, hopefully make their day. Put a little bit of procure on this one just to help the fish find it and hold on a little bit longer while I set the hooks. So the fish hunt by, by, by vibration, by sight, by smell. You want to engage all of those things, give you the best chance. If you're like me, your leisure time is something that you value quite highly. It's something that you don't get a lot of opportunities, so you might as well make the most of it. Give yourself every chance of catching. After all, that's what we're out here to do. Yes, it's relaxing. Yes, you get to try out your skills. But at the end of the day, what we're really out here to do is Hopefully catch some fish. Gotcha. What are ya? Flathead by the feel. Oh no, there's weight there. Be a good flathead. A good flathead. Or maybe a jewfish, it's hard to tell. If it is a jew, it's only a small one. It hasn't done a huge run yet. But it's got weight. I'm still thinking it's a flathead by the fight. It hit hard. And now it's digging deep. It hit fairly close to the kayak, so not really sure at this stage. It's not done the big run that I'd expect from a jewfish to peel line under drag. I'm still thinking a decent flathead at this stage. Haven't seen the profile yet. We're starting to lose light, so it's not easy to see in this water. No, it is a jewfish. There you go. Not a big one but it is the target species that I came for in this dying light condition at this tide. Gee, it's nice to uh, make a plan, stick to it, and uh, see it come to fruition. He's not landed yet, but I've seen him. I've hooked him, I've got leader on the rod, I'm going to let him go anyway so it's not a huge deal but I've pinned him right in the nose so there we go.
just what most people would call a little soapy dew or a school dew. But it's a small mull away. That's what it is. Beautiful. That's the three to six kilo Akumaceros that did that. Made light work of that solid little dewfish. And you can see pinned in his gob there. That's the five inch Z-Man Diesels Gold Rush. And he really took a liking to that. So let's get that out of his gob and get him back on his way.